Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. It's been another great week for paleontology news, with two new dinosaur species named, a new tyrannosaur, and a really interesting little ornithopod from Romania. I'd also like to just say thank you again for the support you've shown on our new series, and in the next episode coming out this Sunday, we'll be talking in much more detail about these new dinosaur discoveries and discussing their significance. So if you're interested in that, please do come and watch. Anyway, let's get to it. Starting off the news this week, we've actually got a couple of stories that span a couple of weeks, but we thought we'd spice things up a bit. First up, the Artemis 1 mission launched a couple of weeks ago and has been continuing with this mission since, after numerous delays. Artemis 1 is both a test of the SLS launch vehicle and the Orion manned capsule. One milestone that it hit this week is the furthest a vehicle designed to carry astronauts has ever been from Earth, reaching 270,000 miles away from our planet. The Artemis 1 mission is one of those that might not seem particularly exciting on the surface, but in reality it is the first major step in NASA's plan to return humans to the moon and, in the long term but very excitingly, take humanity to Mars. We will watch this mission with great interest and keep you guys updated. In other news, a study published in the journal Cell Reports Medicine has given hope to the idea that the disease leprosy might be able to regenerate parts of the body. Experiments have been done on the only other animal known to host the bacteria that causes leprosy, the armadillo. Specifically, experiments were done on the animal's liver, which they managed to manipulate to grow to nearly double the original size. Obviously this is very very complex biology and very early days, but the growth has been without any dangerous side effects like cancerous growth. They're very promising results, but we'll have to wait a while before this can accelerate into the potentially life-saving and life-changing effects this could have. Well, that's probably enough suspense, I know you're all very excited to hear about this new Tyrannosaur species. This week has seen the publication of a new species of the genus Daspletosaurus, Daspletosaurus wilsoni, from the Lake Cretaceous of Montana. The material known for this new species includes a very nice partial skull and a few vertebrae, a rib, a chevron, and a toe bone. But the really interesting thing about this new dinosaur is the fact that, stratigraphically, it's positioned in between the older Daspletosaurus taurosus and the younger Daspletosaurus horneri. Not only that, but the Spetosaurus wilsoni also shows a very interesting combination of both ancestral and advanced features of its bones, meaning that the paleontologists describing it propose that it may be an example of anagenetic evolution in these tyrannosaurs. Anagenesis is a mode of evolution whereby a single lineage changes over time without splitting into different separate groups, which is known as cladogenesis, and it's been proposed in a few other dinosaur groups too. There's quite a lot of good supporting evidence for this kind of evolution being the case in Despletosaurus, and there are some interesting implications for Tyrannosaur evolution as a whole. There's a lot more to be discussed about this paper and going into details about the description and the evidence for anagenesis, so if you'd like to see us do that with me and a couple of other paleontology students talking about this new discovery, please do be sure to catch that new video on Sunday. Next up, another new dinosaur species has been named this week, a small ornithopod from Romania. Named Transylvanosaurus platycephalus, it's a kind of dinosaur called a rhabdodontid, and comes from the latest Cretaceous of the Hattig Basin. An articulated basicranium and both of the frontals from the skull have been found from this animal, and many features of these bones indicated to the paleontologists that this was something new. Before this point, all the rhabdodontid dinosaur material from the Hattig Basin had actually been referred to one genus, Zalmoxes, so this adds to the diversity of these animals from this time and place in the Cretaceous. Interestingly, Transylvanosaurus actually complicates the history of these dinosaurs in Europe, as it's found to be most closely related to Rhabdodon from southern France, which suggests that the biogeography of these dinosaurs and the way they spread across Cretaceous Europe was more complex than previously thought. So another very nice new discovery, and again we'll be talking much more about this dinosaur on Sunday. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed learning about all these new discoveries, and we'll see you on Sunday.